It's the Will Schreiner Show with Will's guests from Magnum P.I. John Hillerman, comedian Roseanne Barr, from the movies Lucas and Lost Boys, actor Corey Haim, and animal trainer Valerie Johnson. And now, Will Schreiner. Thank you. Have a seat, Pete. This is my, I'm Will Schreiner, and this is my dog, Petey. Petey is a, a Hungarian dog. He's a, a Vishla. Uh, do you know what a Vishla is? Oh, they're an old breed. They came over to this country in the 13th century with the Gabor sisters. And uh, they, they're, they're actually a terrific dog. They're a keen hunter, a loyal companion, but they have a very high divorce rate. Um, <laughs> I brought him along today because he didn't want to be at home. He's a little nervous. He's up for his own television show, and he's waiting to hear from his agent. So uh, we'll see. we got a little clip from his show later on we'll show you. The other reason I brought him is that today we have an animal trainer on, Valerie Johnson. She's going to show us how to train cats. Anybody have cats? You laugh? Oh, I told Petey, you can train cats, and he didn't believe me either. I mean, I agree with him. If, even if you could have trained a cat, I mean, who would want to, right? Who wants to spend a day at a beach throwing frisbees to a cat? <laughs> now, I'm not saying that Petey here is brilliant. I mean, but last year he was runner-up in the Star Search spokesmodel competition. <laughs> Petey's not, he's not a trained dog, but for food, he'll do almost anything. For a dog biscuit, he'll sit up, he'll roll over, he'll play dead. For a steak, he'll do minor car repairs. So. <laughs> My point, though, is today that dogs are easier to train. The most you can hope for him for a cat is that he'd maybe cough up a hairball on command. <laughs> and, and two, do you think anybody's going to be intimidated by a sign that says, danger, attack cat? <laughs> do you? I don't think so. I don't think so. You may not even be amused by that sign. That's the, uh... <laughs> but cats have been known to give burglars little tits, tips and things like... <laughs> that's, that's, those are mother cats that are having kittens, you know, they'll... Anyway, they'll, they'll show, cats will come in... <laughs> Sometimes my mouth doesn't work. Petey, that's your fault. <laughs> you tugged on the leash and there you go. Uh, cats will, uh, a cat will come in the house, a burglar will break in, the cat will point them to the stereo. It happens every time. So the only way, how are you going to get a, a cat to attack a burglar? You cover him with tuna fish? It's such a hassle. You know, you do that two or three times and the fun is over, right? Just play along. <laughs> I thought about it. I like the idea of training a cat, especially if you can teach them something useful, like how to be a dog, I think would be a good one. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like cats. I have a cat at home. It's just that today is really a big day for Petey. That's why he's on the show. We're kind of waiting to hear from his agent, see what happens. Uh, so Petey, Petey's real apprehensive. Petey, come to your bedside. This is... Okay, sit there. We have a great show today. Did I tell you who's on? No, I didn't tell you who's on. Of course, uh, from Magnum P.I., John Hillerman will be here. Okay. Just picked up another Emmy. The world's funniest housewife, Roseanne Barr, will be here. And from the movies Lucas and Lost Boy, actor Corey Haim will be here. And animal trainer Valerie Johnson will show us that, yes, indeed, you can train a cat. Right, Petey? So stay tuned. We'll be right back after this commercial. Don't go away. Hi there, and welcome back to the show. Before we bring out my first guest, I want to just check backstage and see how Petey's doing, getting ready for the excitement. Oh, now he gets his makeup. He usually, uh... Just getting a little makeup now. He'll, he'll be out a little later on in the show, but uh, right now my first guest has been called the hottest thing to come out of the kitchen. She's also one of the fastest rising comedy stars in the country. Please welcome my friend and a very funny lady, Roseanne Barr. Roseanne? <laughs> Hiya. That's Hiya, Will. I love the way you walk out, you go, hi there. 
Good to see you. I haven't Good seen you in a while. Wait, I know. A minute. I don't see you. I don't normally see you with glasses. I just got them. New look? Yeah, I can see. I mean, I can't believe that there's like leaves on trees and stuff. <laughs> you know how you just, I always see like this green blob and then I always have these headaches. And then I got these and I went, there's like definition and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Your kids are better looking. Now, <laughs> now you've been called great. a housewife comedian. I mean, what yeah. is, is that because you were a housewife and then? We're still working as a comedian. What did, where'd you get that that handle or hook? I don't know. You, <laughs> I guess because, like, I, uh, you know, when I was a housewife and then I was a comedian. I don't know where I got it. I don't know. You know, I don't like the word housewife well. No? What, no, what do you I, prefer? domestic goddess. Domestic <laughs> That's the way you ask your husband to, to refer to you. <laughs> oh, yeah, goddess. He, he won't do it, but I ask him to. So now you're out on the road a lot. You're touring with Louis Anderson and you're mm -hmm. out in nightclubs. Do you have like groupy guys hanging around backstage? Yeah, oh, sure. A pizza man. And... <laughs> yeah, sure. You have all these guys <laughs> dying to get after the you. Delivery guys are always after me, you know. Good. <laughs> So tell us about it. Now, how, now, I know you started. You haven't been doing comedy, but what, five or six years? Yeah, about six years. Yeah, wh and why'd you, wh what took you into comedy? Well, I was this waitress, and uh, well, I always wanted to be a comic since I'm like three. I always knew I was going to be a comic, you know. I mean, I always knew that. But I didn't know how or nothing. And then when I was like 28, I was this waitress, and I would like insult all the customers all the time, and they'd laugh. So then I thought, oh, I'm going to go do it on stage. So that's how I just went down there and did it. Yeah, so what, like, you, what would you do in a restaurant? You just like throw coffee in the Oh, face. no, I was the best waitress. <laughs> if any waitresses are watching, here's what you do, okay? I go over there and I go, uh, okay, it's like six bucks for the drinks and uh, another three bucks for me to take them off the tray and give them to you. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. I got really good tips. I really did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I did that. You made extra money that way. So now yeah, or else I go, well, you want me to come back, don't you? <laughs> And it were at work, they always laugh, so I figure, hey, maybe I'm on to something here, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, do you draw a lot of your, your material out of your family life? I mean, how many kids do you have? Three kids. Three kids. Is, is things that they do? No, I wouldn't do nothing that personal about my kids. What I, I do if it seems like everyone else's kid does it too, you know? Like, I do stuff that seems like everyone's going through it or that everybody would identify with, but... Sometimes the more personal it is, the more people will identify. But, I mean, I never go tell stuff that was real private or nothing. Your kids don't go, Mom, what are you doing no, telling that no, story? No, I would never do that. Yeah. You know, when you were a kid growing up, did your, what, what kind of background did your parents encourage you to be funny? Yeah, we had this thing in our family that we could say whatever we wanted to say as long as it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> we could, like, never express, like, honest emotion. But if we made a joke out of it, it was okay. Our dad wouldn't hit us or nothing. Uh -huh. <laughs> So I sort of learned it from that, I think, because it was a, just a coping thing, you know? Yeah, I read it said that when a comedian was on the Ed Sullivan show... Oh, we yeah, well, kids. you know, we were in Salt Lake there, so no one in Salt Lake ever thought anything was funny ever. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, they've never been entertained by anything either. So, uh, you know, when we were kids and stuff, we were real comedy. We were like comedy group, because my dad, he's a real comedy fan of my mom. And so Ed Sullivan would come on Sunday night, you know, my dad would go, Comedians! Comedians! You know, we'd all run. Wherever we were, we'd run down the stairs to get in front of the TV and watch comics. Mm -hmm. And, uh... That's when I watched it when I was a little girl. I knew that I... Who, I watched like? it because I just knew I wanted to do it. Yeah, who'd you like? Who were some of your favorites? Uh... Well, I liked, you know, I liked everybody. Didn't, weren't you like Oh, that I liked too? everybody. I mean, I remember some yeah. of the early Richard Pryor. And oh, Becky yeah, Mason early Richard the, Pryor. The great stuff. Yeah, him on Ed Sullivan, you remember that? And then I remember uh, Tony Fields, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, Moms Mabley, and, uh, you know, of course, all, everyone that everyone loves. I mean, all comedians are, are, are great to me. I mean, I laugh at all of them, except yeah. for a couple, but. <laughs> like who? <laughs> <laughs> like who don't you laugh? Don't laugh <laughs> Somebody with a lot of pride. Well, this would probably be really rude, but let's see, who don't I think is funny? I can't say that. That no, would be okay, mean, huh? Okay. All right, now tell This one guy with this goofy <laughs> wife. I don't think he's too funny. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Too. All right, now so your now your husband. <laughs> now stop it out there. Now does your husband does your your husband huh? actually does he when you do stuff he he also writes for you does he does he encourage yeah. you to go out and uh, and do stuff about your relationship with him? What do you mean does he? Well, you know, like if, if you had something funny happen in the bedroom. Oh hell no, I don't do that. <laughs> 
wouldn't do that. I wouldn't kill any personal stuff, you know, unless I changed it. Wait, wait just... <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, you know what I mean. I mean, I wouldn't tell the bad stuff. If it was funny, I'd tell it, yeah. I mean, a lot of it is if it's funny, I'd tell it. But if it was painful or something, I wouldn't tell it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. You wouldn't do that. No, much. no, but sometimes I'll be laying in bed with my wife and something will strike me as, something will strike me as funny. And, I, and I'll, I'll lean over and get a pen and Oh, pencil. I do that. <laughs> Wait, I have a tape recorder. Like, he does really dumb things all the time. Like, we're driving down and he goes... We're on the street, and he goes, uh, look, kids, it's a Mercedes with SL headlights. <laughs> <laughs> you know, who, who knows about anything like that? <laughs> so I want to write that down because it's so dumb. Now, is he enjoying... <laughs> Is he really enjoying your success? Does he go, does he travel with you? Is he is he working yeah. on material with you? Yeah, we write together. We always wrote together, and uh, yeah, he goes to places. When we can get a babysitter, he'll go with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I can't, then he'll stay home. Is, is he a house? Is he a house husband? Yeah, he's a so house you're doing, husband. You're out there. Yeah. So do you twist the knife a little bit? Uh, oh, I try. <laughs> I try to twist the knife. Yeah. Yeah, and you just bought a house. Unfair me. I use that passive aggression stuff. You know, like I go. You now the other day he left his uh, wallet on top of the car and he drives away to take the kid to school. So I don't say nothing, you know, and then just later I'll go, remember when you, uh, this morning when we were going down, uh, cause you left your wallet in the car like you're stupid idiot and it dropped in the, d you know, I'll do that kind of stuff. <laughs> you, know, you know how you do when you're married. <laughs> I'm sure he enjoys talk, uh, you talking about it. <laughs> Roseanne, don't yeah. bring that up again. Yeah. Now, you just bought a house somewhere? Yeah, we bought a house in Encino. It's the coolest house. I'm so happy, yeah. Yeah, is it the first house? No, well, it's my third house I own, but it's like the first one that has rooms. <laughs> <laughs> and what were the others? <laughs> well, they were trailers. Uh-huh. You know, oh, mobile homes. You know, I lived in a mobile home. Oh, you did, did you ever live in a mobile home? No. Any of you ever live in a mobile home? Yeah, yeah really? Do you live there now in a mobile home? Really? It's uh, it's kind of scary living in a mobile home, huh? Because you could get like a flat tire on your house. <laughs> That's kind of scary. You know, at night you're in bed, honey, is the door shut or the windows closed? Is the brake set? <laughs> Now, not really, not really. Now, somebody told me that you're learning to box. The, oh, yeah, I'm learning to be a boxer because I beat up this guy about a year and a half ago, and I thought, <laughs> <laughs> he was really bugging me, so I hit him, you know, and uh, so then I thought I'd just do it. It was kind of fun. I don't know. I liked it. Okay, well, we're going to we're gonna take a break, and then okay. we're going to come back with Roseanne. She's going to show us some boxing tips, so uh, don't go away. Right back after this commercial with more Roseanne Barr. See you in a minute. We're back. We're with Roseanne Barr, and I just want to check in on Petey backstage. He always works so hard at being man's best friend. Petey, are you okay back there? <laughs> He's working on a book. Now, Roseanne, we talked about boxing. Mm -hmm. Now, why are you training to box? For hecklers? <clears throat> well, I'm not really training to box. No? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just beat up this guy one time, and I liked it. And uh, so... <laughs> Is it was an accident, but you know how when you fall into things accidentally and it turns out to be good? Mm -hmm. It's like that. Yeah. Now, is your husband a lot nicer to you when you put those on? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, what can you like, show me a little? Do you show uh, me a little? I just know how to do like three things. The Roseanne Rasmus. Uh, this guy, the doorman showed me. Okay, here's okay. what you do. I see. Okay. Now, put your hands like this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I feel like I got a sucker punch coming. Well, that's not bad. That's but I didn't do this part though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. there you go. Okay. Roseanne Barr. Uh, well, thank you, boss. Yeah, now, you agreed to do some audience. You agreed to take some questions from the audience. You have a seat. I'll go up in the audience and we'll see if uh, some people here had questions for Roseanne. Who had a question for Roseanne? Did you? You had stand up, please. What do you think of younger men? What do you uh, they're dumb. <laughs> do, you, do you like younger men? Yes, I do. Do you uh, like younger men? Yes. How old are you? 18. So what do you oh, yeah. Like so what, you like them 12? 
You got a question? Stand up, please. What's your name? Donna Harvin. Donna? You sure about that? Yes. Okay. You look a little confused. Uh, you have a question for Roseanne? Yeah, Roseanne. Uh, ah. Who do you idolize? I idolize Rodney Dangerfield the most out of everybody. And you, and you played his wife on a special? Yeah, I played um, his wife on uh, the HBO special, and uh, I think that I sort of patterned myself after him a little bit because he's my idol, and I think he's the greatest stand-up comic that ever lived. Yeah, he's terrific. Somebody else? Thank you for your question. Stand up. What's your name? E.G. Harvin. E.G. E yeah. Is that short for anything? Well, <laughs> you knew what my first name was and my middle initial. Hang on, hold on a second. My middle name. They want you to use a special mic, E.G. Okay. <laughs> So my special why name? people yeah. with initials? E.G., what's your question? Uh, I'm considering becoming a house husband. You are? Why? Well, <laughs> I was just wondering if, it's, if you could give me some advice, because maybe I won't become one. Well, I think you should try to... <clears throat> you're, you're not, are you equipped to handle a job like that? Well, I'm not sure, because I've never done it before. Well, you've never done it before? Do you have any children? Two. And so you, have you had, like, have you done anything with them up till now? Well, they're... <laughs> Mostly, almost grown, so oh. they're so past all the years. So you don't have no problem then. <laughs> <laughs> all you have to do is just like, okay, like on the fridge, keep the front of the fridge clean. That's all. <laughs> okay, Eugene, thanks for your question. And uh, you, you had a question as well. What's your name? Susan Bennett. Susan, are you yeah. uh, with E.G.? No, I'm not. <laughs> I don't think it's wife, but it's true. <laughs> No, the question I wanted to ask, you are, you're always saying things about your husband uh -huh. that, you know, he's not quite the type of husband you'd want. So what if you had an ideal mate, who would you pick to be your husband? In oh, I never say he's not the type of mate I want. I think he's my ideal husband. Uh, I like guys that are bald-headed with great big beer guts. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can find one of those here in the audience. <laughs> there you go. You have a question for us? <laughs> well, you got a, you got them all turned on now. He's, he's shy. <laughs> Thanks. You got a question? Yes, Roseanne. I have a two-year-old, and I'm in the process of potty training him. Do you have any words of advice? Well, I'll tell you what I did with my kids. Wait till they can talk. <laughs> And like when they can verbally communicate, then tell them, okay, now just go in there. <laughs> my, now my son is... <laughs> I mean it. It's, it's better. I think it's better. Yeah. My son is 13 months old, and he keeps still dropping through the lid into the water. So it's very... Uh, we started much too early. That's Anybody? One more enough. question. Anybody else have a question? Here's a question over here. Another dream guy here. Uh, okay. <laughs> what dieting tips do you have? Or what, what dieting tips do you have? Uh... Well, I've been on every diet, you know, all, like probably everyone in the world. Grapefruit, bird seed, every, everyone. <laughs> but I think the tip is, uh, don't eat that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks for your question. Roseanne, thanks for taking the questions okay. from our audience. We'll be back with more of Roseanne, and we'll meet actor Corey Haim right after this commercial. Don't go away. Moving, practicing moving down. Uh, we are back with Roseanne Barr, and uh, let's just check in on Petey, see what he's doing now. Oh, okay. You know, Petey, a lot of times, he, he loves to make new friends. <laughs> Petey, everything okay back there? <laughs> I think so. Welcome my next guest, who's a young movie star who has played the son of Sally Field in Murphy's Romance and the son of Liza Minnelli in TV's A Time to Live. He also played the title role in the film Lucas, and he's now starring in a new movie called Lost Boys. Please welcome Corey Haim. Corey... Thanks for being here. Are you used to this wherever you go, girl screaming? No, not, um, no, not really. This is a uh, shock. You come out of a little hallway. It's like, you know, sort of like a maze. And you walk out, and of course you see Will first. And... Well, we like our guests to be dazed and confused when they get out of here. <laughs> right, right, I'm right. Uh -huh. So are you having fun with doing the movies? You're like a yeah. teen, teen idol now. Movie star all of a sudden. Boom. Does that feel good? 
It feels real good. Real, How real old good. are you? I'm 15 and a half. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 15 and a half. See, when, when you're that age, do you, do you do that anymore? Do you go, I'm 31 and a half? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I do. Yeah. What'd your mom think when you got your ear pierced? Oh, my. Um, Did she get mad at I, you? Yeah, they, they. You know, it was for the Lost Boys. I've always oh yeah, you oh, had so for, to for a part. Yeah. yeah, that was a wonderful movie. You were great. Well, in that. thank you. We loved that movie. So now, since, well, somebody told me, what would you do if your if your son came home with a pierced ear? Would you go crazy? Well, I think if he had to do it for a movie, it'd be okay. I wouldn't go crazy, but you know, I'd wonder, uh, wow. you know, what you were thinking about or something. <laughs> <laughs> so now, somebody told me you're dating an older woman. Mm, yeah. yeah, a little, you know, about what, like um, 40, 50? Uh, <laughs> you know, no, she's 16. Oh, 16. Oh, oh that's, that's not older. That's six months older. Yeah, but it's older. Yeah, oh, really? Older. Yeah. She got more experience? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know, in her way. Uh huh. No, no, when you when you go out on a date with a girl, it, what, she's 16, so she has a driver's license? Yeah, she has a Nissan Pulsar, a really cool car. She's, um... So you're dating her for the car? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much just from, for, you know, for the transportation. What about a good-looking girl that had a, a Volkswagen? You just write her off right away? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you do when you go out on a date with it? Will you guys get in the car? And what, then what happens? You go just We usually around. Um, go to our friend's house and from there just take it spontaneously. You know, we, because making plans, like, sort of everything always messes up, you know, and um, we try to do weird things like ice hockey skating, you know. Mm-hmm. Are, you a big, are you a big uh, skater? Yeah, I like it. It's pretty fun. I've been doing it um, for about 14 years because wow. I was born and raised in Toronto, Canada. Oh. Yeah, so. so it's mandatory up there. Yeah, it's like um, we're brought up on on skates there, and everybody's brought up on basketballs here. You yeah, know? better sprouts in Los Angeles. <laughs> right. You know. Mm-hmm. Sure. So now, are you are you good? Do you play Do you play ice hockey still? Are you worried about you know? I'm like looking a- for a league, and I can't seem to find anything. Oh, oh you don't want to play that, honey. <laughs> you can hurt yourself doing that. No, no, no a- I don't. I don't play um. See, there's a thing called house league, and then there's non-house league, and um, oh. house league is... So you play in the house. Right. What is that? Oh, yeah. So what is that? Is one is a little generally play like a Nerf puck or something? Uh, <laughs> you know, Nerf puck, Nerf ball. But aren't you worried like taking a hockey puck right, you know, between the no. eyes? And... Yeah, no, you? you wear helmets, and um, see, I don't wear the ones with the full face mask. I take my chances, I guess. You think if you hadn't been an actor, you'd like a career as a hockey player? Yeah. Think oh. you? Yeah, yeah. That, that, that was my first thing, you know, hockey was... um. You know, it was like, Dad, Dad, I want to play hockey, you know, and let's go. And, you know, so he was my coach for like eight years. And then I came out to L.A. and um, just really never had interest. Mm-hmm. And now I'm starting to again. Can I ask you a question? Sorry, well, can I ask hey, you a question? Hey, sure. Well, when did you start acting? When I was ten and a half. About. Was that was that the first movie you did, that Sally Field thing? No, the first movie I did um, was called First Born with Terry Garr and Peter Wells. Oh, oh, that was you, a great movie. That was, I, yeah, that was great. You were very good in And that. Lucas That's was great, too. You know, my daughters both love you, you know that. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, they okay. have real bad crutches on you. Okay. So would maybe you you'll sign something for me after, sure, maybe I'll come over for dinner or something. Oh, you would? Oh, okay. Okay. Can we just have them come by your house for dinner? Can we send out? <laughs> I'll be, you know. Can we send out for food? Sure, I wouldn't have to cook, would I, honey? <laughs> I would like you to cook, you know. Okay, nope. I'll cook. All right. Well, nope. isn't she cute? We have to talk to her. Well. Don't get mad. We have to talk to her. No, because you have all these maternal things that you yeah, you know you, you can relate. Your daughters are what age? Well, Twelve and eleven. They're a little young, but they still think you're real cute, you know, huh? So, being a teen idol now, do you have like chores that you have to do and things like that? I have a little more leeway, uh-huh. you know, than your average. He's a star. You got like an entourage that travels around, does all the stuff for you now. No, I'm just a kid who wears, you know, this is. See, I dressed up nice for this show. For no, me. you did. You dressed very nice. I did. I come. I mean, I usually wear jogging pants, you know, and socks, and I'm not into shoes. You, you well, know, you, could, you, could, you didn't have to wear shoes. I'm, I'm just lazy. This is know? like a theme show, though. It's like a Merv theme show, <laughs> Denim Day. <laughs> Nice. Well, you know, I get free, free clothes. Oh, right. you do? Who Make, gives them to you? Sears? Uh, <laughs> now stop. <laughs> At least I have something new on. <laughs> you got to stop putting bleach in the laundry, you know? <laughs> now, Corey, we got some home movies of, uh, of you as a hockey player. Okay, um, this is when I was like seven years old or something like that, and we were playing hockey on the team, and I I think I score a goal here. I don't mm-hmm. know. All right, let's take a look at a little home movie. This is your age seven. Here's Corey in action on the uh, on the ice. 
Okay, now it's hard to see me. I'm number two. <laughs> oh, number two. That narrows yeah, it down. Sure. I think we're the red team, and here I go. See, I snag the puck from the guy. Yeah, and I race up. See, he trips me. And <laughs> That's you sliding he, across he, on your belly. He saved it, unfortunately. That's good. That was pretty. Yeah. Long. God, God, God. Uh, that was fun. That was your idol, like Wayne Gretzky. He's Wayne Gretzky's unbelievable. Yeah. You know, the puck follows him. Sure. And um, yeah, he's he's um, in hockey. He is. Yeah, so now the film career has taken off. You're 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 doing it's, real well. It's been going pretty good. Mm -hmm. What was the most enjoyable role you played? Uh, Lost Boys. Lost Boys. That yeah, so Sam Emerson. That was such a good movie. A lot of action. You know, I've never yeah. had anything with action. It was like um. Lucas, you know, a little nerd. That was great. You know, yeah. and that that was um sort of playing down. Lost Boys is like up and flying out of windows, flying up, throwing things, you know, explosions everywhere, air mattresses, water pistols, you know. The whole cast and crew yeah. was excellent. The best thing was when you go, wait till I tell mom. That was my favorite Pretty part. Pretty funky stuff there. That was really yeah. good. But well, wouldn't you rather, like, be doing dinner theater? Uh, <laughs> You know, like, like, you know, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, you know, with... Uh, well, you know, you I'm know. in that soon. I'll be starting a production of Cat on a Tin Roof Sunday. Oh, are you? Yeah. Uh, and who, who are you doing it with? Uh, Wayne Newton. Wayne Newton? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Since, now, now, since you don't have your driver's license, you brought your, you agreed to bring a skateboard in. This is. Uh, I brought a skateboard for me and for you, and you gonna, I want you to. Um, see, when I was your age, I really loved them. You, okay, do you still do ride you, them a lot? I ride them every once in a while. You know, wherever I go, they're easier. They get exercise. Um, I wanna, I wanna teach you how to do 360. Okay. Oh, All right. So and Roseanne, you're up too. Oh, okay. All right. We're gonna come, come over, over here, Rose. Okay. okay. I got my little Jeff Kendall, and this is a Hosoi. A Hosoi? Yeah. All right. All right, you demo. You demo. No, you do what you can it's, do it's, first. Well, what can you do on a skateboard? Well, I can. You know, I can. I can move across it, and I can do this. You know, basically. Oh, oh. Right. 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 I haven't been on one since I was your age. Oh, look at you. Huh? You're like you like live for danger, don't you? No, basically what I was going to show right. you is just you know going just like um, planning. Just, you yeah. just you know you spin on it and it's you go fully around. It's a 360, so nothing much. And then um just like pop. Whoa. it up. Oh, that's that's a cool thing that kids. It's just real you... simple, you know. None of this falling around stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey! But you see kids at the beach doing that. <laughs> I told you this was a bad idea. <laughs> All right, so do do a trick. Do a, do something. Uh, do a trick. Well, whatever you know. Just a give us your best. Basically, you're going down the street okay. from one stop sign to another, and you have a lot of leeway, and you're listening to walking. You're going down. Basically, what you want to do is just spin around oh, and just keep continue great. on course. I just guess. keep moving. Yeah, and then when you want to lift it up, when you just lift it up. Uh -huh. Just I'm real simple that. stuff. I want to teach you. Uh -huh. Okay, now. What <laughs> Can you do that, Roseanne? <laughs> You're like me. Huh? Right. <laughs> Corey, thanks so much. Listen, good luck to you in the career. You're a nice guy. And I enjoy meeting you. Roseanne, thank you both for being here. We're going to take a break. We'll be back and learn how to train your cat right after this. Don't go away. Well, you know, I hope Petey's behaving himself backstage. Let's take a look at a clip. He's probably trying to talk to his agent right now, see if the news is coming. Just waiting to hear. Petey, you heard anything from your agent? That's the way I feel when I talk to my agent sometimes. So. But we live for danger on this show. So far, I've taken a punch. I've fallen on a skateboard. My next guest says you can teach an old dog new tricks, but can you teach them to your cat? She's here. She has one of the trained house cats in the entire country. I guess the only one. And uh, who can train a cat? And who who do you think is better here than to show us how to do it? Valerie Johnson, an animal trainer. Valerie. Mm -hmm. Hi, Valerie. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. That's a good-looking cat. A beautiful cat, isn't it? This is Sphinx. He's an Abyssinian. An Abyssinian. And what what makes uh, 
Is that a rare breed? Yeah, actually it is. They're they're one of the oldest breeds, and that's why he looks like a, a cougar, a mountain lion, because he's got that ticked fur. Mm -hmm. And he comes from Egypt, one says. That's what uh, the history that's books the history say. Of it. Yeah. And, yeah. Now, what, what do you train a cat to do? Well, the reason I like to train animals is to make life a little easier at home. You don't want them to scratch furniture. You want them to come to you when you call. So that's what started. Um, Can you get the paper? Uh, that's a little heavy. Sunday, no. Maybe Monday or Tuesday. You can try. Just I don't know. A little kitty paper. <laughs> a little kitty paper. Uh -huh. Yeah, we'd try it. All right, so you have secret special tr tricks, I guess you'd call it, for training a cat? I, I love cats, actually, and uh, we have a cat at home, but uh, he does nothing. Well, the way... First of all, you've got to get him in a position that you can communicate with him. So choose a table like this, or even a little higher, that so that he can look at you. Um, and what I start with is something that, that cats would normally do in not in the wild, but um, in the circus, for example. Sphinx. First of all, you take a, a clicker. That's what this little noisemaker is. You get his attention, and you feed him something that he likes to eat, like a little piece of turkey or, or chicken. Here, you can try it. Just see, click it. Okay. And then... Oh, that's amazing. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then what okay, happens? Okay, let me try. Well, he, he didn't have the food in your Oh, hand. well, he didn't care. <laughs> well, there, now he's... Let's see <laughs> I think he's a little stage struck. A little we'll stage try struck? Again. Right. Sphinx? So. Sphinx, you know, Petey's career is going places. <laughs> His might not go anywhere. Let's try. Let's see. If, oh, he's not in Is he a little nervous, you think? He's from the... real nervous. He's been nervous since the earthquake, to tell you the truth. He okay. jumped out a window and was gone for 14 hours. Mm -hmm. But uh, Does he know that, you know, if he starts off well here, he might, you know, get on The Tonight Show or something? Well, maybe. Let's see here. <laughs> It's like a showcase for animals, this show. Yeah, this is not stupid pet tricks. No. <laughs> well, so far, yeah. Now, watch this. I can, tra I can train him. What's it, what's it mean? So just Sphinx. Sphinx, yeah. Sphinx. So you start like that. You, you, you give him the Sphinx, noise. Sphinx, eat that. Associate it with food. Now, come over here. Like, I can ask him, Sphinx, give me your foot. Sphinx, can I have a foot? Sphinx, foot? Sphinx, foot? leave your feet planted. Oh, he no, listens to me. He listens to me. He, he seems real nervous. Well, let's see. see? What, what? Okay. Try I, I want to give him a second. I don't want to pressure That's him. A, I, I think maybe he is a little too nervous. Sphinx? Sphinx, if it doesn't Sphinx. go well, Petey's coming out. Right. Oh. Sphinx. Foot? Can I have your foot? Sphinx? Oh, he's so nervous. Sphinx, just kind of look around. Uh, oh, perfect. Oh, but I think you're a natural. <laughs> Can I have your foot? Can I have your foot? Can you paw? Oh, he's well, Sphinx, just, just, just sit down and do nothing. <laughs> Valerie, now Valerie. <laughs> Hello. All right, now you got you got him to uh, do something with the refrigerator? Well. Maybe we should try that. Yeah, at home, he, he does this. I can ask him to, to pick his little feet up, and he'll close an open refrigerator. Mm -hmm. He seems real nervous. Let's try. Sphinx, Sphinx. can you look? Can, can you close it? Yeah. Good boy. That's not bad. That's pretty good. Now, if he could learn to do that to open it, he could be in the dairy products that, just like no, that. No, then we're in trouble. <laughs> Never teach your cat to open the refrigerator. Only close it. Otherwise, he may get into more trouble than so, you'd like. Now, you're going to show us how to, how to get him to pause. Yeah, Should we take him back out of the lights? You think that would help? Um, that might help to do it behind. Let's try him one more time. Okay, Sphinx. No, I think, I think that maybe... I we think we should go We're trying back here? Okay. Yeah. Hang on, Sphinx. We're going to go back here. Follow us. It's the lights in the crowd. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at it. He's <laughs> typing. He's typing back here, folks. Okay, Sphinx, Sphinx you better now? Okay, let's take a look over here. Sphinx? Sphinx. 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 That's it. Can I have your foot? He's doing basic math. <laughs> Can I have your foot? Can I have your foot? Oh, you know what? Maybe you can try that baby food. Mm -hmm. Oh, baby food? Yeah. That baby food? Yeah, that's a, that's a treat we for have, him. Oh, here's some baby food. What does he like? Does he like these strained uh, mice? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you find something that looks good to him, and I say, foot? Can I have your foot? Foot? Can I have your foot? Do you like that? He does this great statue thing. Can I have your foot? <laughs> can I have your foot? Thanks. Foot? Foot? Oh, it's amazing, Valerie. People probably right now are calling their neighbors saying, you got to see the Will Schreiner show. They got this trained cat on. It's unbelievable what he's doing. Thank you so much for bringing him. We'll keep working with him. We're going to take a break. Valerie Johnson, ladies and gentlemen, we'll take a break. We'll be back to Petey. And we'll see if we can keep working.
One second. I'm just putting some finishing touches on this uh, little palm tree here. This is to make my next guest feel comfortable. These things, they start out as keychains, and then they become this size, and uh, <laughs> one day they end up as Macy's parade floats. <laughs> my next guest... Uh, it's an inside joke, but... Uh, <laughs> See, we have, we have tropical drinks. We have everything necessary to make... Oh, well, we have parasols to put in them. I forgot all these. Okay, this is all to make my next guest comfortable because he has one of the best roles on television. He plays Jonathan Quayle Higgins on the popular series Magnum P.I. Please welcome John Hillerman. Please have a seat. This is very thoughtful of you. I do appreciate it. Macadamia nut? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted you to be comfortable. Where did you get that palm tree? Uh, I'm not sure where they got this, <laughs> but it's yours for the keeping. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you could put it, because uh, I, I was reading in your bio, it says you have a 260 degree view. Yes, I do. What happened to the other 100 degrees? Well, <laughs> it's on the 38th floor of a building, and it's a view of, in Hawaii, we call it from the Mau Mauka to Makai, which is from the ocean, from the mountains to the sea. Mm -hmm. It is a beautiful view. It spoils me. Yeah, well, this would fill in that other 100 degrees. Yes, perfect, and I, I'm going to take that <laughs> back on the plane. Please. Anyway, congratulations on all the four Emmy nominations. Thank That's you. That's terrific. Thank you very much. For a Golden Globe. <laughs> It's a, it's a great role. Do you, do you enjoy playing Higgins? Well, at the risk of sounding smug, I think I have the best role on television. I, I do, too. I it's think a so. wonderful role, and I never tire of playing it. We're mm -hmm. going into our eighth season. Eight uh, seasons? Yes. Are you going to keep going? Well, I'd like to. I, who knows? You, I, I've been in the business too long to predict the future. I'm mm -hmm. sure you, you feel the same way about that. But when I leave here, I'm going to a big party they're having to celebrate our 150th episode, wow. which will be the first show of the new season. Mm -hmm. Well, you have that great, you have such a special relationship. I mean, it works on camera with Tom Selleck. Is it the same off camera? Yeah, oh yes, we're all, we're very, sort of adversaries. we're very close. Well, no, we're, we're good friends. We don't, yeah. we don't fight off camera, thank God. Uh, we've often commented that we're going into our eighth year and we're all still for speaking, which is kind of unusual in television. <laughs> but you think you're carrying Selleck? <laughs> It's you you're the ladies want to see in the swimsuit, isn't you're it? You're trying to get me. Into, you're trying to get me into trouble here, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, he seems like such a great guy to work he with, is, and you yeah. probably work. You know, it's, it's a tough place to work, isn't it, Hawaii? Well, it's a dirty job, and somebody has to. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Was it trouble adjusting that when you go to Hawaii? Do you miss? Well, actually, well, I'd been there to guest star on Hawaii Five-0, and mm -hmm. I'd done a couple of movies there, and I'd only been there for like a week or two at a time. And I always seem to go during the humid season, so I thought that it was really an uncomfortable place to live. Uh, you know, socks would take a week to dry, that sort of thing. But when you live in Hawaii, you, you realize that it's a very special place, and I love it now. Mm -hmm. I, I really enjoy living there. How much time do you spend? You spend most of your time there? About eight months of the eight. year. Mm -hmm. And you're goofing off when you're not working, swimming, surfing, all that stuff? <laughs> Do I look like I swim, <laughs> surf, and all that stuff? No, I, you, you, I would think you'd take advantage of I that. drink, I smoke, I don't exercise, and I'm very happy. Very <laughs> good. Now, um, I mean, that seems like the way to, way to live over in Hawaii. Just, uh... Well, it's a very laid-back lifestyle, mm -hmm. but in the best sense of that word. Mm -hmm. Do you see Jack Lord wandering in the streets saying that? Uh, <laughs> Well, Jack does live there, and we, I, I bump into him occasionally, socially. He's, yeah. not, he's more or less retired. But he just walks the streets going, book him, Dan. <laughs> no, he yeah. does not. <laughs> well, you guys, I, I think it's so interesting. I mean, your career, you play this Englishman, mm -hmm. uh, yet you're from Texas. I am indeed. I'm from a little town called Denison, Texas. I know, north of Dallas. North of Dallas. You I know, lived in Richardson for a couple oh, of years. Oh, you did? Well, yeah. you know. Was, we used to go yeah. to Denison. Yeah, I, uh, I, 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 everyone <laughs> thinks <laughs> it was very rural when I lived there. It was nothing in Denison. There was a Lake Dallas, right? There's still nothing in Denison. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that where you started acting or did, uh... No, I, I went to college and I majored in journalism and then I was not a serious journalism major. And I was in the Air Force for four years and I discovered acting in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. On our side? I was... Uh, <laughs> a little joke. Uh, I'm just, I'll just joke whenever. 
Uh, and you went to New York? And then I went to New York and I studied at the American Theatre Wing for a very short time. And then I starved to death for 20 years and became an actor. 20, 20 years? Doing, yeah. doing what? Like, uh... Well, I did everything. I did I Broadway off Broadway, summer stock, regional theater, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I was on the stage for 15 years. And then I came to Hollywood in 1969 and started starving to death in Hollywood for a while. Mm -hmm. And eventually, you know, it all pays off. Yeah, oh, well, sure. I mean, you know, how many, I mean, out of all the actors that come to Hollywood, there's only a few that really hit it big. There are really only a handful. There are a lot of very talented people out there who will probably never make it. Mm -hmm. It's a you very difficult business. Yeah. To be in. You still go back and do the stage every once in a while? No, I haven't been on the stage since I came to Hollywood. I don't really have any desire to go back to the stage. Uh-huh. Because a lot of actors talk about they love that live audience feel. There was many a night when I wish the audience would go home. <laughs> <laughs> not this group. Not this no, no, group. No. Not this group. You yes. know, some nights you're performing and they don't, they don't get it, and you think, oh God, just go home. I think we've all, we've all had those audiences. But people now, your people think you're English from the accent. Yes. I mean, uh, th have you ever had uh, people stop you on the streets and ask you where? Oh England yeah, I get. I, we did a show in England about three years ago, and all the English think I'm English. I get fan mail from England all the time saying we're so proud to have an Englishman on the show. <laughs> And I write back and say, I hate to disappoint you, but I'm a hick from Texas. Mm -hmm. You still keep the, the accent handy? What, the English accent? The Texas accent. I use it occasionally. I, did a, I do dual roles on the show once in a while. And one of the first ones was one of Higgins' hated half-brothers, who was a rodeo cowboy from Texas named Elmo Ziller. <laughs> <laughs> I use the Texas accent for that. Yeah, I mean, you can just, I read it in your bio, you just slip back and forth. Yeah, I can just turn it on just like that. Well, you know, we thought we, we thought you, we'd test you with a little, uh, take a standard uh, Texas phrase and do it with an English accent. All right. And just to see how it sounds. All right. Now, do you want this in English? Well, we, yeah, well yeah. With an English accent. This town ain't big enough for the two of us. You... <laughs> You better get out of you better get out of town by sundown, partner. <laughs> There's something missing there. <laughs> uh, now, now, okay, now we'll do this with the Texas accent. This is from Hamlet. <laughs> get thee to a nunnery. <laughs> Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? <laughs> I am myself indifferent, honest. But yet I could accuse me of such things that it were better my mother had not born me. <laughs> you never... Shakespeare, of course, is turning over in his grave. Sure. Right? You never see that in Dallas. Alas, poor Billy Bob. <laughs> John, thanks for being here. I'm a big fan of yours and a pleasure to have you on the show. The Will Schreiner Show is brought to you in part by Clairol, the makers of loving care. Well, we are back, and uh, as they say, you can't teach an old cat new tricks. But let's see if Petey... Petey, did you hear from your agent? Petey, Petey, come here. Hey, come on, Pete. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Oh, how you doing, pal? Petey. Did you hear from the agent? Did you hear? You hear from your agent? You hear? From, you heard from your agent? You're all excited? Okay, I guess you got the part. Let's take a look at the promo we put together. This is what sold the show. Here's P.D. Vice. Take a look at the film. Coming soon, the network is proud to announce an exciting new police drama. Device. Watch out, Don Johnson. There's a new cop in Hollywood, and he's got a wet nose for trouble. Starring Speedy. Tonight, Speedy is running to stop a madman. His arch enemy, the evil Mr. Whiskers. A dog is forced to do mine, and to save him, Petey goes undercover, disguised as a bag lady, a Chinese warlord, and singer Frank Sinatra. There's adventure in the sky when Petey takes the controls, tension on the streets when Petey gets tough, and in the bedroom, romance like you've never seen before. Starring the Gamora Sisters. Hey, 
Pagoda. And special guest star, the Isadora. The streets are a lot safer when this cop is on the job. Steve Ice. Are you excited? Hey. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's our show. Look for Petey, Petey Vice coming to a, a television set near you. I want to thank all of my guests today. Roseanne Barr, Corey Haim, John Hillerman, Valerie Johnson, Petey, and the cat that did nothing. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Willie just rolled over. What? Oh, oh thank heavens. We can go home now. Ready to go, Sphinx. Good boy, Sphinx. Good I kitty. knew you could do Good it. Good kitty. We knew you could do it. We just had to be patient. That's Thanks, it. Valerie. <laughs>